people, Muslims, of course, that tried to preach the religion for the principles of the religion of Islam. So they came and founded or created, built a place which they called Ribat. So this is where the name of the city comes from, Ribat or Rabat. So Ribat comes from Ribat, which is Arabic. It means a tie. A tie, it is a place where these people were tied under some religious principles to teach the people in the meantime to fight against some of the Berbers, a very uh, powerful Berber tribe, a huge powerful Berber tribe that is called Bo Rebwata. Rebwata. So some of these uh, of this, uh, of this tribe, this Berber, were not religious. I mean, they didn't want to be convinced, uh, converted to Islam, and some of them were converted and again deviated from religion. So these people in 10th century, these uh, Muslims, created this place uh, to, um, to fight against these people uh, that were uh, again deviated after being convinced and also the ones that weren't, uh, didn't want to be religious at all. So uh, this is just a little bit brief history about Rabat. So talking about this site we're visiting, um, first this is uh, called Hassan Mosque, what it used to be the mosque. It would have been um, the second largest uh, mosque in the Muslim world after one in Iraq called Samara. We think that the Berbers are generally simple people and like to live a simple life. This is why everything around them is mental, where they want it to be simple, like things, the crafts they make, and also the monuments, the buildings they make. So the architecture and level of architecture, we consider this, as I said, a simple architecture because we don't find a lot of mosaics or stucco that we see, for example, later on in other monuments, which makes a difference. So this is sort of simple, uh, mainly clay and, uh, and stones. And this mosque, or this minaret, is considered as a twin sister with, as I said, the Ketubia in Marrakesh, built in the same time, uh, 12th century, and the Lakhira that in Seville. Uh, they have the same architecture built by the same uh, people. Uh, whereas uh, uh, the other side uh, post is the Mausoleum. Um, as I said, very impressive uh, one. Also, the structure, the outside structure, is uh, basically built on marble. Marble. And this one was built in the period between 1969 and 1971. It's uh, much less than one expects because we see it inside, it's a lot of work inside. So uh, um, it was built, uh, it was engineered by a Vietnamese architect, a Vietnamese architect called Vu Tong. Vu Tong. And some people wonder why uh, they call uh, a foreign person uh, to engineer it. This is something which is done on purpose because they want to, uh, and something which is very common in Moroccan architecture. In Moroccan architecture, we see the contribution of many races, local races, Berbers, Arab, and also outside Persian art, French, English, and so on. So, this is something which has been uh, meant on purpose.
say something, so we have to repeat the same thing. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is God. Akbar, uh, the greatest. Yes, the greatest. God is the greatest. Yeah, Allah. I don't have a voice as good as the Imams, but. Forgiveness and permission. Yes. Why? Mm -hmm. No way. The one I guess is It's a I I'll get it translated later. <laughs> 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 you were saying he's the best one in the group. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that money later on. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <Sorry about that. laughs> What's your uh, yeah. It might knock some sense into me. Knock me away. Come on the steps. I don't know. They have to think Harvey. No, we'll send Harvey first. <laughs> If Harvey's all right, we're all okay. Taking my picture? Yes. <laughs> I didn't know I was being to do with the 
legend that basically that's why we call it the Hetzel Kid, the Gate of Money. That was his place. And before deciding to separate to split Africa from uh, Europe. I 
That is the catback used to be the residence of the founder. Of the founder. It is the first person. Yeah. 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 What's his name? What's his name? Alec. Alec. Alec, did you get a good price? Mucho frío. Mucho Oh, los ojos. And the four head. It gives the red color and black color. <laughs> Depends. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> you can use it as a hashish. Are you sure that makes No, it's forbidden. Hashish is forbidden. Of course it is. And the, yes. and the yes. start yes. and the eyes here. Yes. Yes. For eyes. And this is the okay. It's scratch. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because at the time most of the invasions came from the east. Mm -hmm. So they used to, uh, and they also the wind always came from the west and they brought the bad smells to the course. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the drainage system yeah, yeah. underneath these tunnels. The cloaca maxima. Huh? Yeah. And the site yeah. extended the 45 uh, hectares. Oh, wow. But yet up to today only half had been excavated. Mm -hmm. That's why each year mm -hmm. the students came here to excavate more. Because the city, you know, it was destroyed by an earthquake. The Lisbon earthquake of uh, 1755. Mm. And uh, the serious excavations were begun by the French in 1915, at the beginning of the colonial period. And now the Moroccan government continues the work. And the mm. archaeological evidence suggests that there was a settlement here from the Neolithic uh, period. By the time the Romans arrived here in the last century before. There was already a town of some importance here. It was a Berber settlement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in uh, 25 BC that the Emperor Augustus granted the Berber kingdom of Mauritania to Juba the second. Juba the second. Juba is thought to have been part Berber and part Carthaginian. He may even have been a descendant of Hannibal. Hannibal. Yeah. Very nice bronze head of Hannibal had been found here. Is in a Rabat museum, and uh, you know, Juba uh, married the daughter of Cleopatra, Cleopatra Selene, daughter of Marc Anthony and uh, Cleopatra. And he was succeeded by his son Ptolemy, Ptolemius, who was, who was assassinated by Caligula, you know, the famous. Crazy. <laughs> we call him Coagula. Coagula. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in 285, 285 uh, AD, the Romans abandoned the city for unknown reasons, but the Berbers continued to live here until the coming of Mulay Idris, of the Arabs of Mulay Idris, the first, first one who brought Islam, yeah. the first one, uh, first founder of the Idrisid dynasty. Okay, we we'll have to go from here and we'll be seeing the Patrician site. Alawite Sultan. So the Alawite dynasty started from 17th century, so he's the second uh, Alawite Sultan reigning. As I said, he's a, he's a very, very different um, Sultan because he's very uh, tyrannical. So Mouresmaïn was a Sultan that uh, had 30,000 slaves, 12,000 horses, 500 concubines, and cut off the heads of four Berber. Um, uh, 400 Berber leaders and displayed them in first as a lesson against anyone that would dare to oppose his I mean, The Berbers caused him nightmares. So, uh, some of the main reasons uh, for which he had this architecture, which is in fact unique, the only one in Morocco, all these huge buildings and this double or triple wall, is especially uh, about is the fear from the Berbers, because the Berbers, something to say about the Berbers, they were very strong people, very powerful people. The Berbers were the ones that fought. Or due, or due to whom the French went away from Morocco. So very powerful tribes in the Middle Atlas and the High Atlas. So then the Berbers would fight against any tyrannical person. They wouldn't mind any. So then, uh, including the King Molesme, they were trying all the time to, uh, to, to catch him. And he was quite aware of that. In time, he managed to catch any of them, so they would be severely punished. So in the meantime, so he, he had these huge buildings, and also he had the lake. Because he, th he thought that one day or, or another he would be caught and besieged by, by the Berbers, or would be besieged by the Berbers. If so, in case he would be besieged by the Berbers, at least he would find something to rely on, something to eat and drink for himself, his stuff, his animals. Up 
so we take your pictures, then I will uh, give you this is the orientation. Mm -hmm. Scaffolding. So with people don't fall down. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. There it is.
Exactly. Yes, you can use an outside. I mean, after our dependence from France, he used to be inhabited by Chicha. Yes, please. So, and he used to teach astronomy and neology at Karawi Mosque, and of course his family they were very qualified on the carpets. So when he died, his family agreed with government to turn this house into the large cooperative of Moroccan carpets. So it belonged to 1,300 women, all weave their carpets at home, and when they finish them, they bring them here to be exhibited by the intermediary of the government. And we have Berber women around from all over Morocco. They come to Fez because Fez is the capital of the handicraft. <laughs> You can have the best food. Right, okay. If it's not doing the best food, don't play. <laughs> if it's not tasty enough and very good, don't play. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we say it for drinks, cheers, and also for the, for the food. Bissaha. It doesn't look that great at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Do that, see? No, no, no. It's a good flavour, that's all. Mmm. Give me a better. It's a bit nippy. It's a bit nippy. It's a bit nippy. It's a bit nippy. <laughs> All right. Have an idea of the different food. All these. It's a rice, is it? It's very sweet. Mm. 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 For example, this type, what we call them a kaftan. Kaftan in the origin is for wedding. But even kaftan exists in two types it riches or simple. Riches see almost the two pieces separately, the top plus the under. This type, ladies, you can use it for ceremony or for big day. We call them a rich kaftan because it's rich in fabric, also rich in the embroidery. But this simple kaftan, it's just one piece, like this, you can use it for inside of house, like robes. But she exists with long sleeves or with short sleeves. But the jalaba, it's one with hood, for outside. Always with sleeves and the hood. For men, also for women. But she exists for winter time or summer time or spring, different seasons and fabric. But a gandura, it's, it's ample dress, it's wide one. In Africa, what we call them a bubu, if you heard about it. Here we said gandura. This type for ladies with the embroidery, two pieces, it's same use like kaftan, it's ceremonial. Gandura, simple in Qatar, like this kind for inside of house. Who you put inside, uh, la ladies or men? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Not together. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the gandura for men also. It's also it's wide one. This type you can use it for south south of Morocco in Sahara. It complete the charm with scarves by indigo color because in the origin the indigo it's similar natural. He protects the skin from the sand. It's wind that come on the face. We call them a blue man. Normally the reason to blue skin in the money. For more demonstration, you must touch command to try this type to see how you have to try the picture. Okay. Just step back a bit, Mama. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, George, what's the camera? The blue man. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
name. You have changed the name. That's very good. Sir. 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 Hmm? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I've got rid of the boys. Oh dear, I've left them with Brendan. I feel bad. <laughs> different stages you can that part you see on the left so every day they have to wait it's going to be dry then they did it again with their feet to take off the air bubbles and later it got from here to the artist to shape it unfortunately they are already yes all of them they are gone center they make the template to make the design for the other design for the others you see sometimes they have very complicated. Imagine I die for your wife. Bread for ages.
and uh, I want you to pray as hard as you can.
the restaurant. Uh, we all, so there is a that, that's that's the bar. And this is the restaurant. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I think if the weather stops, it will be a good idea here. But much better. <laughs>
milk, really. I mean, the process, you know, it's a processed milk to get the butter. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know the processed milk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A churn. Yeah. yeah, a churn, yeah. yeah. It's actually, you see, that's a churn. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The French call it le petit lait, I think. Petit lait. Small bit. You'd like the suitcase. You can't take a picture because my uh, camera's around my neck. Come here, little one. Oops. Oops. Oh, you don't have to on the start. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take him home with it. Yeah, if you take both of them, you get a uh, good them. price. He'll, he'll sell them. He'll he sell will them. sell them to you. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> They can sell anything. Yeah, she said, I didn't come home with a camel. I came home with two kittens. <laughs> there you go, little ones. Oh. Very sweet. They're very little, aren't they? Mm. <laughs> nice. They're very nice. What is it? What's your nudie there? I'm not thought about seeing them up here, are we? Donkey, the tea. Now, what he doesn't have a kitten up there. Oh, cat. Oh, hello. You didn't even see me there. That was nice. She ignored you. Yeah, no trouble. She didn't. This is, this is um, I mean, uh, the meal. Oh. Then the trousers in. Yeah. Like it's yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that stone or that clay? The, no, it's stone. I can't say. Uh, it's stone. Yeah. 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 yeah, so you'd have to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought very so. Very. Yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll test her now. You can't put it back in now. <laughs> you just watch. You want to put it back in. <laughs> Yeah, the mint I told you for uh, mint, uh, uh, bit, uh, when uh, the one I showed you, not the green one, mm. I showed the one in test. So mm. the mm. one that's got a different flavor. Oh, you yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed you're not yeah. lifting the. Uh... Yeah, because this spot is not. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> your excuse. So this spot, so I want to get a bit lower so then I can. <laughs> that's more like it. Glass bottle, bottle yes, glass. Espresso. 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 Espresso, Moroccan vodka, and whiskey on it. Whiskey. 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 Whiskey.
thousand ten? Yeah, man, how many do you get? Don't know. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ellen. Ellen should be open. What is this young man's name? Muhammad. His name is Muhammad. Yes. of Marrakesh uh, are charged of looking after it. Uh, it's all trees, um, all of trees, I think more than uh, uh, more than 8,000 trees in this gun. It's a very big gun and it's uh, something like 1,500 by 800 as a surface. Water is used to irrigate uh, these olive trees and before, uh, so this back say uh, beginning of uh, 12th century by the founders it's a system that was invented by the founders of Marrakesh, the Almoravids, in the 11th century. And the reservoir was dug around, uh, say, beginning of the 12th century. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> before, the water was used also for a, uh, I mean, uh, it's like drinkable water, uh, equipment for the houses. And also, the first dynasty, the Almoravids, the founders of the Almoravids in the 12th century, they uh, used the pool to train their soldiers, according to some stories, to train their soldiers. So it's an important site uh, in Marrakesh. Or well, something about the word Marrakesh, which is Arabic and is written in two parts. More that means fast than push quickly. So it doesn't mean we have to pass quickly. It's something that dates back to before the 11th century, in which it was founded. It was founded in the 11th century by this, uh, these Berbers, or the first Berber dynasty in Marrakesh, coming from the south. Um, and before that, it was like uh, almost completely deserted area. And the people of the caravan, starting from the south, south of Morocco, south of Africa, then they would advise each other that once they would get to this place, that would be Marrakesh, they would have to pass quickly, otherwise they would be attacked by thieves and bandits and so on, because it was a place for the bandits to change. So it's the uh, meaning of word Marrakesh. Uh, the second thing about Marrakesh is very important and makes it very much different from all the cities, and it's important for you because you have seen uh, all other places before you see Marrakesh, you see it's much different uh, from other places. So Marrakesh has got a special place and special um, special characteristics in Moroccan history. This is why some or many historians consider it as a city museum. A city museum in comparison to the other cities at least we have seen. Simply because unlike Fez, Rubat, Casablanca, Tangier and all the other cities, it's like a museum if you find a bit of, it, of everything. So in Marrakesh you find the aspect of the Medina, the narrow alleys, the monuments, uh, the gardens, the palaces, and so on. Even uh, the level of monuments, it's different. So you find the monuments belonging to different uh, periods of time, of history. Like this one, for example, dating back to 12th century. The Saddin Symmetry we'll see later on dating back to 16th century. Bahia Palace, uh, late 19th century, etc. Uh, so a lot of uh, monuments, of course, that have got uh, different uh, uh, historical backgrounds. So, um, uh, when we talk about this site, the Kutubia, the name comes from Kutubiyin, that means booksellers, because Kitab in Arabic means a book, that's another word which you can add to uh, the vocabulary in Arabic. So, Kitab means a book, Kutubiyin booksellers, simply because there used to be a lot of people selling books, especially holy books, Quranic books and books related to religion of Islam, at the feet of the minaret, this is what they call it, Kutubia, from Kutubiyin booksellers. Um, uh, before talking about this one, so I'd like to talk about this area that used to be in fact the original mosque. The first mosque that was built by the founders, the al Moravids in the 11th century. Um, so what you see there, that's, uh, those are remnants of the pillars and uh, of course remnants of the pillars that are original. Whereas the ground floor has recently been restored to give the people an idea of what it generally looked like as a mosque. When the al Muahas in 12th century came, they demolished that mosque and built that one under the prejudice that it was badly oriented towards Mecca, the sunrise. Why, but, but when they built that one, it has had the same orientation. So uh, the minaret is the tallest building, as they say, in Marrakesh, about uh, 80 meters high. And there is some of the laws created by the local authorities of Marrakesh. Uh, saying that, or meaning that, no building in Marrakesh should 
go beyond six months. Is this something important to so make comparisons? Um, yeah, this is, this is uh, it was sitting in a car, maybe on a car, because most people ask me about the furniture in the past. So um, it's uh, well, wooden chairs, tables, some beds, and so on. But the most important furniture would be carpets that we find on the floor. So this palace, in fact, was, uh, was very, very beautiful, much, much more beautiful than it looks now, with uh, with all the furniture, with all the carpets on the floor. So we find everywhere on the floor, and also hang hang on the wall. We tend to have almost the same design of the carpets in opposite sides, and also on the ceiling, especially uh, the flat ceiling. They would have some carpets on the floor. I mean, what's almost uh, the same symbol, just have a sort of symmetrical reflection, which may, would make it beautiful. So, who said, some of the beautiful carpets would be devoted to the Imam, he's an important person, the one who should learn all the verses. And also in the reception halls, with the vizier, uh, we receive the guests from different parts of the world, uh, that we have come through after the uh, first section, after the administrative section. And also in here for the Imam, as I said. Uh, in the residential apartment, it is considered the most beautiful one that we'll see will be the last one, or next after this one. So, uh, he will sit like this, cross legged to the Jedaka, and he will his small children in front of him, the lions, and he will have sort of uh, six, this is the way to punish. The one which is longer, one which is shorter, so the longer one will fit or punish the lazy ones in the back, so he doesn't need to get to get up and you know, so he's like he lazy, he, he would like to sit comfortably, like his wife, he, he would sit, I mean, he would sit because he wants to sit comfortably. And of course, when someone is uh, doing some naughty things, so he just use the long stick and he would hit him in the back. So no need to stand up and so on. So he would stand up only once he finishes his courses. Um, this is something which still happens nowadays. We have still lots of these Quranic schools in Morocco. And still the, uh, the Imams keep the traditional way of doing that, so they sit like this and still have the sticks and so on. It's <coughs> changing, but still much of, the, uh, of these um, original things being still being kept. Yeah. Um, uh, so, I think it would be much more difficult for me to get up now. It's easier to sit down. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.